an unfulfilled job. It was a sunny day on Wall Street, and the machine was learning. In nearby Long Island, a small group of mathematicians led by an erstwhile Stony Brook department chair implemented what would be wildly successful learning algorithms on market data. While strategies such as mean regression that a company usually returned to the average of its peers were widely analyzed, for the first time the strategy could adjust its own parameters. Such automation removed the slow reaction times of human input. Yet in terms of broader impact, Renaissance Technologies' methods fell short. Firms like Citadel torpedoed market liquidity benefits via algorithmic front-running. When Renaissance launched their value fund, the Institutional Equities Fund, it failed to deliver on their expectation. Shortly after creation, the fund dropped 8.7% in the single month of August 2007 and worse, lagged the market by 10%. Their ambition of a large-capacity value-based fund in the vein of Benjamin Graham and Warren Buffett outran the technology available. Two subsequent breakthroughs in AI would realize the methods for intrinsic value discovery as practiced by the greats, and in the course, empower the individual value investor to conquer markets. Famed investors Howard Marks, Buffett, and Charlie Munger outline a view of intrinsic value investing that supersedes value investing taught in neat bundles. Their method of investing, even while rooted in valuation methods that hark back to hard and fast rules like Graham's requirements on price to book, goes a step beyond. Buffett has been quoted, read 500 pages every day. In the most important thing, Marx writes, in fact, one of the things I most want to emphasize is how essential it is that one's investment approach be intuitive and adaptive rather than be fixed and mechanistic. Chapter 1 Second Level Thinking Marks provides the on-ramp for our emphasis. If we're to use quantitative tools in an investing approach, they should be adaptive, generally intelligent methods. There are many AI doomsayers that say the machine will replace humans. Currently, we know of no machine learning ML, systems acting on the market that are not intermediated by the designers at some level. Gregory Zuckerman writes that founder Jim Simons pulled the plug on the Renaissance system when drawdown exceeded 20% in a month. When questioned by his lieutenants, Simons gruffly replied, I would do it again. Simons had built a world-class quantitative team. In balance, we have access to LLMs and generative AI tools that the Renaissance team could only have imagined. Yet access to tools is not enough. Equally important is the understanding and experience that elevates the apprentice to artisan. Figure 1. Data-driven techniques to improve return reduces investment doubling time. The techniques require critical thinking and provide a framework for an investor to improve. Like diet and exercise, expected gains vary by diligence and effort. The Roman philosopher Seneca relates the parable of seeking wisdom from Socrates. In the story, a young man approaches Socrates then a famed philosopher and leader of the Athens School of Philosophy. Socrates, I thirst for wisdom. Please give it to me. Socrates makes an appointment with the young man to meet at the river Eridanos at dawn. When they met, Socrates, a burly man, plunged the young man underwater and held him there. Finally, the young man surfacing and gasping, half assaulted Socrates. Again holding him, Socrates delivered the message. When you want wisdom as much as you want it to breathe, you'll attain it. Typically, knowledge isn't equated with wisdom. Socrates had wisdom, for which knowledge is a precursor. Socrates led a school of professionals, which through his dialectic shaped his teachings. At NVIDIA, where I worked, the CEO employed the Worldwide Field Operations Division, essentially a global real-time knowledge collection apparatus. As individual or even professional investors, we likely don't have the resources to build an organization, 